Hi everybody. I don't know about you, but I think if you've come to join this uh, webinar, you're probably a bit fed up with what's happening at the moment. And, you know, these times of uncertainty thrown us all into a bit of a dilemma, I think. And some weeks in now, and I don't know about you, how you're feeling, but I feel I've gone on a bit of a roller coaster. I feel like some days I'm okay about it and I feel like, yeah, I can cope with this. And then other times, I feel like, what the hell's going to happen? You know, get into that, uh, I, can't, I can't stand this much longer type of feeling. And then I started to think, well, this is, this is what happens uh, when we go through some major change. And I thought about the change model. Um, and if you're managing to see this change model, it shows us some of the areas that we, uh, we go through from that initial shock. Um, despair, flipping heck, what's happening to the world? There's a virus that's out there, it's in China and it's, you know, it's spreading fast and it's killing people. And then we didn't denial maybe a bit, you know, well, yeah, but it's not going to happen here. And then oh, flipping heck, it's been diagnosed here and this, you know, it's even got up towards Leeds. Crikey, this is, this is serious. And then we get used to that and then, you know, there's, we're getting frustrated. There's nothing on the shelves in the supermarkets that we have to wait. Children haven't been sent home from school. We can't go to work. We're having to school them. We're having to work with our partners in conditions that aren't right. Or maybe we can't work. Maybe we're sent home because there is no work for us. Suddenly the frustrations and the anger start to build up. Then we move through that because we want to shout at somebody or blame somebody. And we come from that, and then perhaps we hit a low bit. You know, we start feeling low, and it's a bit of despair, and, uh, you know, wishing it would just go away. What can we do now? And then we start to experiment with some things. You know, we start to move up a bit. Maybe, is that where we are now? Are we Are trying to work it out? Are we trying to make the best of what we've got? And is the government sort of giving us up here to say, you know, we're doing really well and there's some light at the end of the tunnel, we should get back to normal? I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm up there and then other times I feel like I've gone back down to this. Can't stand it any longer. This is awful. How, how long is it going to last? What, what's the world going to be like? How is everything going to go back to normal? Well, of course, it will do, and history has proven that whatever happens, the world goes back and people get through it, and we know that they will. It's just these testing times. And, you know, but for each of us, we've all questioned whether or not we could cope with this, whether we can get through this. But you can, because if you think back, you've got all the evidence to support that whatever you went through in life, you got through it. From taking your first baby steps, I know you can't remember them, that must have been quite a challenge. Being separated from your mum, going to school, facing all those people, that was a major challenge in your life. And just then you thought, I've got used to this and I know where I am and been uh, fitting in in, in primary school. The next challenge is you have to go into a secondary school and meet all the challenges that that presented so you you know going out into the world of the work getting yourself an interview we've, we've been used to these challenges and what we you know have depended on all that time is you know our inner self our inner wise self that has reassured us through all those times that we can do this we can get through this and so when we feel a bit deflated and defeated just remember that your wise self has give you all the encouragement along this pathway to let you know that you can do this, it's going to be fine, you're going to get through this, because you have all the resources to be able to cope with life. Sometimes these wobbles just make it feel a little bit more uncertain. And then what happens is, you know, we start to worry. And that affects everything then, doesn't it? Um, we've said before that, you know, worrying about things that are not in your control just leads to more worry and fear and disillusionment and sadness. Worrying about the things that are in our control gives us a purpose, 
gives us a chance to problem solve. So you can't go to work, you know, you don't even know whether you might have a job at the end of all this. It is a worry, but it's not going to solve the problem. What you're solving is the day-to-day -day problems. How are we going to get through today? How are we going to, you know, get enough food, feed each other? How are we going to manage our relationships? Because we've never been thrust with each other for so long periods. And it's having a lot of strain on a lot of people's relationships. I understand that in China, the filing for divorce rates have increased since people have uh, been able to come out from their, um, from their lockdown. So we, we've got lots of different tensions going on. And, and the worry about that makes us lose sleep. So what, what I'm saying is you can't, when we worry, and when we find ourselves worrying about the things about the world, and about the country and how it will get back on its feet and whether we'll ever financially uh, have any jobs to go to. This just makes us feel bad. And you can't solve any of them problems. What you can solve is the problems in your everyday life. You have control over that. And that makes you feel more productive because you can worry about how you're going to get to the supermarket and queue up, how you're going to manage the kids and manage your job and work from home <clears throat> and still have contact with your friends and people who you don't have contact with. So you're solving them already and you're in that problem solving. And I think it's about looking at ourselves, what do we need? Worry stops us sleeping. If any of you out there have got poor sleep and you found that insomnia has increased, through uh, all this worrying about the uncertainty, then perhaps there are some things and tips that we can do. Knowing full well that worrying keeps us awake, having an opportunity to put that aside. Um, taking our mind into where we're at in this present moment, instead of letting your mind wander off to all these hypothetical worrying that you don't have any response to, so bringing yourself back into the present is a good way of getting yourself calm. Uh, and it's a fact that China has now um, recommended people use mindfulness as a way of calming your brain. So calming the brain's first thing about getting some sleep, bringing yourself back into the room, back into yourself. And I'm a big believer that you know, breath, breathing is your best friend, keeps you alive, but it also controls your own stress levels. Taking deep breaths, holding for the count of four and slow release. Do that a few times. That calms yourself down and it gets your brain clearer. And it's the clearer brain where you can set yourself off into a place where you can comfortably want to go to sleep. There are some good uh, techniques out there and there are some uh, things that you could use. Um, one of the areas that you, you focus on your mindfulness is your own body, first of all. Just recognise what, what, what your body feels like when you are perhaps going to sleep or laid in bed. Are you feeling tense? Do your shoulders still feel? You're not fully relaxed. Perhaps a little bit of that muscle tension release. Take each area of your body in blocks. Stroke the face, hold for the count of four, let go. Top off of your arms and hold, tense the muscles. Let go. Same with the trunk. Let go. And the legs and the toes, back right down to your toes. Tense them, let them go after a count of four. And suddenly you might start to flop a little bit. And that's a good sign you're letting your body know that it's time to relax. Your breathing as well, just focus on your breathing. You've been in your room, in your bed, in your body. And then perhaps there's a place where you could take your mind to. Therapists call it a special place where you can take your mind to. Perhaps leaving all those worries somewhere else and taking your mind to somewhere where you would think is particularly tranquil and peaceful. Some people like a secluded beach and imagine what it would be there like, like at that present time with that 
all the senses being attuned to that. Perhaps, you know, a garden, perhaps woodlands, forests, whatever might do it for you, take your mind there and just imagine being there, the sounds, the smells, the sights, and the feeling of calm that would come over you when you feel that safe, special place. And these are all things, techniques that you can do. Um, you can download aids um, to help you. There's uh, a guided self-help um, called, uh, you can download the app called Calm. There's uh, an EMDR-based uh, app called Sleep Restore, which is a guided meditation. So instead of you having to try and find this special place, it perhaps take you to one. And then the one that um, I use in therapy, because I'm an EMDR therapist, I ask people to download uh, EMDR on Spotify or Amazon, and it's called EMDR Music Therapy. And you pick the one that says bilateral stimulation. Put it on earphones or headphones, it very subtly, slowly fades in and fades out. And what that does, it has a real calming effect on your delta brain waves. These are the one you're activating when you're thinking and thinking and worrying and worrying. <laughs> it's had a real calming effect on them. And if you're going to your special place, you're listening to that, there's a good chance that you might just nod off to sleep. So all these things are useful in helping you to care for you because you are more important to yourself than worrying about the world. So self-care to get you through this difficult time is what you deserve to give to yourself. We talk about, um, well, psychologists um, think that our well being comes from living a life with a balance of activities that give you feelings of pleasure, achievement, and closeness. The closeness to other people is something that we can't uh, under these circumstances, but we, that with technology we can get close to people. We, we've got telephones, we've got FaceTime, we've got Skype. All these things help us to communicate with other people. When we're feeling in that depressed stage of the cycle, don't often want to speak to anybody perhaps feel that we're not in the mood can't be bothered got a bit fed up but actually that's the time to communicate to communicate with others because we're social animals we really need other people so if you found yourself isolated because of not being able to go out to schools or work then this is a must for you to contact make contact with others we need that for our own survival and our own well-being and feeling good. But also it's a chance for us to give to others. Because when we feel good, when we feel generous and we give to others, we get that loop back feeling of feeling good. And asking the other person how they're coping, how they're getting on with this. It's a real caring, they feel cared for. They feel you're interested and you get the feedback that I've done something good here, I've given of myself. The one thing that we don't have when we don't get out into the world is that feedback loop of doing good. And we need to have that because it gives us our identity. It's who we are. We communicate when we go out into the workplace. We do something really well. We do something really good. We get that feeling that we've achieved something. We've got a purpose in life. And at the moment, if you're not, then that's been taken away. So what better way of getting your self-worth up and feeling that good is giving that other person, a friend or family a call, giving you that good feeling that we're not getting from when we're going out and being in our life outside the world into work or school when we're 
in lockdown with people that we live with, you know, we can resent them, we can realize that we're getting into familiar arguments and we know we're going to go down that path if we just let let that happen you know how many times you've been accused of not doing something that you never do that you know you don't help out enough or you never tidy your room whatever it takes and you know that it's gonna end up with you defending yourself and that person getting more irate and then there's tensions and just think they're going through the same stresses you know they don't know when this is going to end how this is just not natural to be with somebody that long this is not normal to have to experience this i don't know about you but if i've been in a friend's company for 15 minutes it's exhausted me and i just want to get out of that conversation so imagine trying to keep that pace up when you don't have a choice of getting out away from that environment and coming back in and feeling refreshed so communication with the people that you live with. And sometimes you don't have to say a lot, but maybe walking past and giving a gentle touch on the shoulder or putting an arm around, you know, it lets us know we're all in the same boat and we're all, you know, feeling the same. But pick up that phone, phone somebody you haven't spoken to for ages. You've got no excuse now, have you? Got all the, all the time in the world. And we talk about getting some pleasure and we said that we get pleasure from being close and talking to people but what other things give you pleasure you indulge yourself it's okay to you can do anything you like now you know if you want to go and do something have a look what you can do in your own home i know some uh, friends have had a virtual pub night you know people that they used to go to uni with or something or they moved out the area contacted them they all get a drink and they go on the FaceTime and they have a good pub night. You can do a book quiz, some of them. You know, there's things that you can do. Uh, it's not all things you can't do. And we've decided that the family I live with, that we're going to get dressed up because me and my daughter-in-law, it's over a month now since we put a pair of heel shoes on and some uh, perfume and got a dress on and felt good. So we're going to do that on Friday, get a takeaway and uh, put some music on, dance like we don't care, uh, have a few drinks and just get that fun thing back in your life. Um, may maybe even do a bit of karaoke. Not sure about that, but, you know, it's been mentioned. And so we've got the closeness, we've got the pleasure. What about the achievement? That's lacking. That's when we get... Right down there, not achieving anything. Just the same old, same old. Well, maybe your achievements are in looking after yourself, thinking about what you can do. Can you stretch? Can you do stretching? It's really good for your body. Can you practice mindfulness? Can I really go inward and just notice my breathing? Can I look around my room and see three things that I haven't seen before and really look at them. You're grounding, you're hearing the now and you're being present. You're caring about yourself. You're taking control of them worries. You're contacting others. That's an achievement. You're doing quite a lot. Care for self and you can care for others. If there's anything that I haven't answered or haven't given you enough help with, and that you feel that you you might have a question we thought we might just leave it uh, where you could email the whitehall clinic uh, with your uh, emails if there's anything else that you would like some more help with that i haven't mentioned or something i've mentioned that you would like a little bit more information on then please feel free to contact us And I think knowing that everybody's in the same boat, everybody's feeling like you are, when you have up days, you think, yeah, I can get out of this, not much longer now. But when you have a down day, just think, I've got through worse things. I've got, I had to learn to walk. I don't remember, it's probably as good. I look to write, I embarrass myself. Maybe I shouldn't have, um, let me just get that screen, I don't know what that is. So we've gone through tough times, 
we'll get through this. We'll be stronger for it. And you know what? There's always good comes out of things. We're also seeing that there's some positives come out of this lockdown. Did you know the reported uh, burglaries have gone down? Everybody's at home. You know, there's not enough people being attacked uh, in the streets. That, uh, those statistics have gone down. So always look for something that, you know, to be thankful for. Um, we've got some time to do things that we always put on hold. So we get through this and we can get through anything. Okay. If there's any, anything anybody wants to say, please email us. And um, I look forward to helping you out again. Because that's my pleasure, you see. I'm contacting, I'm communicating, I'm getting pleasure. And so I think I'll leave it for there. And um, thank you for joining us today. I hope you got something for it. Okay, bye now.